das geht raus an alle Marcella da draußen. Fumba Town von Gurget. Stone Town Record. Du bist der DJ Walid. Live the slow life and walk upright. Leave your phone home, live the good life. Live the slow life and walk upright. Leave your phone home, live the good life. Kipenda usipopenda Mina jitambua Nafanya vile na votaka Nakamua njia na yopita Jinsi gani na chukua Na mambo gani Na yapenda kutibua Na kipanga kimaisha Kwe marisha makaazi Na wasafi utulipu Na mlango kowazi Kwa nje shamba lango Na funa mbaazi Ndizi para chichina Kito chanazi Live the slow life And walk upright Live your bone Well, I can mute. So it's key. Sebastian's on mute. Guys, I'm starting again. Yes, Sorry, again. Let me know. I'm starting again. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I was still on mute and I started talking. Welcome, everyone. I'm excited to have you and see so many people participating today. I want to welcome everyone here in Zanzibar, in our offices in Pumba Town, and of course, everyone from around the world. I see people joining today here from Canada, from France, and places all over. Welcome. I'm so excited to see many of you here this afternoon. And when we want to talk about Zanzibar and the future of its tourism, and of course, investment opportunities this amazing island offers to all of us. My name is Sebastian Dietzold, CEO of CPS, developing the soul and Fumba town here in Zanzibar. It is my honor to host this event today. The team of CPS has worked tirelessly to prepare a fantastic webinar for all of us. Welcome. We will have a panel discussion with high ranked professionals of the tourism sector. Tobias, the CEO of CPS, will introduce to you one of the most exciting projects in Zanzibar today. And of course, we will have a Q&A session for you to ask our panelists the team of CPS who are behind the screens, ready to answer any questions you may have. During the panel, we'll have a short poll with questions for you. Feel free to answer them. The answers are completely anonymous and we'll publish the results at the end of the webinar. Now allow me to welcome you all again and to start by shortly introducing CPS and Zanzibar as a destination. The clip you heard in the beginning is produced in Zanzibar by Stonetown Records and DJ Barlid and sung by Lawrence Herrmann. Thanks for allowing us to use this great song, Stonetown Records. I'm sure this song will climb the charts. But now, let me start. CPS is committed to delivering sustainable and urban developments in Africa. We are based in Zanzibar and in Dar es Salaam. We have a fantastic team here to develop projects that empower people and the economy of Zanzibar and Tanzania. Empowering is really at the heart of what we do. These projects are designed in a sustainable way, respecting nature, using holistic concepts of permaculture and growing value for our investors. We are humbled to be here in Zanzibar today, the safe place to live, work, and invest in Africa. We often compare Tanzania and Zanzibar to Switzerland when it comes to safety and stability. Zanzibar is culturally diverse and respects all religions. Here on this beautiful picture of Stone Town, the old town of Zanzibar town, 
You can see churches, mosques, temples, and of course the beauty of this town. Stone Town is a world heritage site and a place everyone has to visit at least once. Of course, many times it's even better. Everyone needs to experience how it is to stroll through the beautiful small streets of Stone Town with all the colorful shops and the scent of indigenous spices of Zanzibar. Zanzibar has experienced an unseen growth over the last 15 years. The GDP grows annually with around 7%, outperforming many other African countries. The population is growing mainly through migration of people coming to work in this fast growing economy with countless opportunities. And of course, an amazing beauty. And of course, the tourism sector is one of the fastest growing in the world today. This is the reason so many of you joined us today to hear how this sector will continue to grow and develop. Before moving on, I need to say one more thing about Zanzibar. Zanzibar is truly inviting and welcoming you as a tourist, but also as an investor to work, live, or even retire in Zanzibar. The government issues 99 year title deeds for everyone in free zones and condominium projects, like the one we will introduce to you today. There are options for residency, for home buyers, and full support by the government for diaspora and investors all around the world. On this picture, you see the president, His Excellency Dr. Shane, handing over a title deed to home buyers from the UK here in Fumba Town. It was so important to him to show his and the support of the entire government of Zanzibar to secure investors and ensure they feel safe and welcome. We are truly thankful for the support of our government. Before introducing to your amazing panelists, allow me to try to switch quickly to Lydia, the CPS marketing manager. Lydia is in Pache and wants to show you the stunning beaches of the east coast of Zanzibar. The location where CPS is developing the first residential resort in Zanzibar as a condominium project. Hello, Lydia. Hello, Sebastian. Greetings from Sunnyside, East Zanzibar. Today we're in Paje, which is a long strip of white beachy sand, which on one side is bordered by the local village over here, and on the other side is a home to beachfront apartments, uh, eateries, as well as a vibrant nightlife, not forgetting the clear crystal waters of Paje. Paje is known for its huge tidal range and as a result it is fast becoming a mecca for water sports. Each year tourists from all over the world have flocked in in increasingly huge numbers, each one excited to experience the shallow calm waters of Paje and the vibrant nightlife. Our borders are open, our beaches are inviting. Zanzibar awaits you. Over to you Sebastian. Thank you Lydia. Later, we will switch again to Pache to show you more about what is happening there. It's great to see you, Lydia. Thank you. Now, gentlemen and ladies, allow me to introduce to you our panelists of this evening. We feel very honored to welcome Honorable Mahmoud Thabit Kombo. He is the Minister of Information, Tourism and Heritage in Zanzibar. He has been serving the government of Zanzibar since 2006. Under his leadership, the tourism sector in Zanzibar has evolved in the past years into one of the strongest anchors of the country's economy. Welcome, Mr. Combo. I want to welcome Kenyan-born British national Graham Stewart Leslie. Mr. Leslie is a corporate management and marketing professional, formulated and directed operations for upscale hospitality brands such as Conrad Luxury Hotels, Hilton, Kempinski, and Aga Khan Luxury Hotels, to only name a few. He's also a heritage tourism and hospitality specialist, experienced in asset preservation, regeneration around and renaissance of purpose for sustainable tourism development. Welcome, Leslie, we are super happy to have you. Mandate 
and he has a mandate to the government of Sansva to drive that tourism for all agenda and responsible for the heritage general regeneration of Sansva Stone Town. So we're great. This is really expertise we have here today. I'm also very happy to welcome Fatma Mabrou Kamiz. Fatma has 20 years experience in hospitality after extensive training in Cyprus, UK and Egypt. She has met, held management positions in various prestigious hotels in Tanzania, including the award-winning group, The Residence Zanzibar. Many of you may know that. She's passionate about sharing her expertise to develop skills and advance businesses through the design of customer-focused strategies, professional service delivery with a robust attention to details. Welcome. Welcome, Lucas Sinogo. Mr. Sinogo started a new life chapter at age of 27 when he left the world of the corporate businesses and moved to exotic Zanzibar. Today, he's joining us from Czech Republic. He's invested in Zanzibar and is currently general manager of Tulia Zanzibar Unique Beach Resort, which under his lead was awarded the best luxury romantic beach resort in Africa, a place you really have to all visit. I'm stopping to share my screen now so we can see our panelists very well and we'll come back in a moment. So, Mr. Combo, I see you're unmuted. You need to unmute your phone. I would like to ask you our first question to our Honorable Minister. Yes. Yes. Tourism, Mr. Gombo, you are in discussion, and I know that I've seen you personally with major global tour operators and airlines. The question everyone is asking can you give us an outlook of when the big players will be sending tourists again? When will the tourists start to come back to Zanzibar, Mr. Gombo? Okay, well, we have been discussing with many governments. Uh, yesterday we had a meeting with, uh, with uh, Russian authorities and uh, Russian tour operators. We've been discussing with the European Union. You, you saw a few weeks ago the Italian ambassador was here in my office uh, together with his whole team, and we had a very extensive meeting. Uh, the key question now is uh, there is no corona in Zanzibar, for sure. Everybody can see that because we took the, the Italian ambassador to all our hospitals and, uh, and, uh, and uh, corona centers, which were located for corona centers. And, and, uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, on the other side, we, we are discussing with all uh, the relevant authorities. Uh, the main issue was, uh, was now for them to come back. We have, we have put up standard operating procedures, but on top of that, we have uh, abided with their guidelines that when they come to Zanzibar, when they want to leave, they should have a corona clearance certificate which we are doing the test here locally in mainland Tanzania and also in, uh, in Zanzibar for, for the test. So the rest, I think, uh, is about uh, statistics mostly. But uh, if there was any kind of situation, we would have known. Our government clearly stipulated that we'll follow the international guidelines. But locally, because we have done all our, our major, major research uh, currently, and we are, we, are, we are sure that there is no... Uh, such kind of uh, corona test. Even uh, this new machine which was uh, brought in, the PCR, the polymer chain reaction machine, it has proven many uh, samples that were taken it was corona free. So if the patient goes to hospital currently, that's what we do, but we abide with all the international regulations. For example, even with the airlines, Fly Dubai, they've got their own regulation, Emirates has got their own regulation, Qatar Airways, and we are abiding to that to welcome people around the world. Thank you. Thank you. So you're expecting tourists to come back soon, yes? Definitely. Yes, I was checking yesterday's figure. Yesterday yeah. only, we received 200 and, about 220 tourists in Zanzibar. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I have to say, I have to support that. I have been in part uh, like a for something two months ago, and, and on the beaches, there was really very, very few. I was there now a few days ago, and I could really see tourists. Not as many as we used to this time, but yes. I can still see them coming back. Before we, were receiving, before we were receiving in thousands a day. So yeah. we, I would say we are around 10 to 15 percent growing slowly. Okay. Fantastic news. Thank you, Mr. Compo. Graham, having, yes, had, a sneak, having had a sneak preview at... Uh, the next edition of the Fumba Times, 
I could read, there's an interview with you in that uh, next edition, I could read that the higher yield, low impact tourism economy is going to be the key for Zanzibar. In a few words, Graham, please describe what exactly it is you are working on in Zanzibar and what model of tourism will work best for Zanzibar in your opinion? Right, a few words makes it tough. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but let me just say that uh, we're obviously working very closely with uh, Honorable Minister Combo and the government, uh, Minister of uh, Finance and Planning, really to formulate the strategy for the uh, Vision 2050. Um, and we, as Zamani, really only look at destinations where we see that tourism can be a real catalyst for change. And in a sense, uh, also where we see that governments are looking at the long term and who are really behind creating the right enabling conditions to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Our experience around the world, uh, we know that that's not an easy combination to have. But yes. we think that Zanzibar is unique in this regard. It's uh, unique from... Uh, every aspect of its assets, both people, uh, geography, uh, to mainland, wildlife, and of course, its natural heritage assets, as well as marine and terrestrial. So we are actually working with developing that strategy. Um, we see in the next 10 years, the plan that would be to also integrate um, development uh, investments so that the model itself uh, is much more streamlined. Um, and has a much greater impact with economies of scale. And that isn't just in tourism. So we see tourism development in a sustainable way covers all sectors of a nation. So it's about improved infrastructure. It's about improvements of the environment, protection and conservation, regeneration of the heritage uh, in Stonetown, which really is quite unique because it's a living heritage and it's it's unique, not just from a heritage perspective, but from the multicultural um, disciplines and background and historical relevance that it has. So um, our role that we see is very much to work with government, to work in that sense in creating um, the right collaborative structures that is with public sector and private sector and community. So we see integrating communities from a resort, conservation, environment, agriculture, uh, waste management, recycling as critical long-term aspects for the nation. And that mm. the long-term DNA success for creating resilience and uh, being strong enough as a self-reliant nation for future shocks, whether it's Corona or climate change, and we believe that uh, Zanzibar uh, has all of the components to, to allow that to, to really happen. So our role is somewhat multifaceted, um, but we say using tourism for all as a catalyst for change, but it covers everything, including health, improvement of health uh, centers, improvement of uh, education across all. We're looking at uh, with with all of the ministries um, creating a uh, education for all program also creating improved skill set training around the service industry um, and again not just tourism it covers multi sectors and increasing potential manufacturing um, it whatever yeah. ultimately will improve the socio socioeconomic uh, aspects for the living conditions of the people of zanzibar which as I said in the beginning, is what we see as the essential DNA for tourism and for visitors, uh, not just for today, but for tomorrow. And uh, that's uh, the, shortest, the shortest words I can find for the question. Yes. I mean, this is really what we're seeing. And I think it is that the Corona times have also given an opportunity to the government. And we're seeing how they're taking that opportunity by improving uh, medical facilities and, and also you know, uh, we, I've seen today there's been big campaigns about uh, waste management and cleaning up the island and, and putting things into place that we need for further growth. And then I think taking a breath sometimes can be also an opportunity. It's definitely an opportunity. And I've discussed this with the Honourable Minister. Um, disruption, uh, disruptive 
uh, elements in, in the world are, can be and should be positive and, and taken positively. I think yeah. from a Zanzibar perspective, not everybody within the communities of Zanzibar have actually benefited from tourism. So our approach pre-corona was always to look at a more inclusive um, yeah. strategic plan uh, from a tourism and job creation and in integrating agriculture, et cetera, uh, for that process. And really it should be, I think, understood that, that um, Zanzibar has done extraordinarily well. I think under the, the leadership of, of the Honorable Minister Combo, especially so in the last um, five, five or so years, and it has nonetheless been organic in the last 20 years. So it has evolved without any great planning to be blunt. Um, but I think now the government is very clear about its long-term plans. They see the clear benefits toward that and are very much behind uh, having a much more integrated vision. Um, that means that there, there should be a, a plan and will be a plan that would be for improved zoning, um, increased legislation where it's required for protection of conservation and lifestyle and people. Um, but also for um, yeah, investment, increasing the investment uh, conditions, uh, which they've demonstrated very clearly that they're, they're willing to do and are doing. Um, and that it's what we would call tourism 1.0. So 1.0 is, is an organic evolution. And you've already said and shown the 15% per annum growth. It's already over 35% uh, employment for the island. So it's very impo important that can be much higher and much, and we believe in a much more sustained way um, and through a higher yield. So at the moment, the, av av the actual daily spend per visitor in, in, in Zanzibar mm -hmm. is probably the lowest in the Indian Ocean and, and, on, the, uh, and on the East African coast, in fact, um, where we know that the natural, the na the natural assets uh, it has and the experience it, it offers in a much more planned way, not just in marketing and promotion, but actually within the experiences of the island itself in a much more organized and coordinated manner. We believe that can uh, be quadrupled in the next seven years and tripled in the next five. Um, this will have a major impact in, in what we call a higher yield, lower impact. Um, lower impact um, doesn't mean that you only end up with 100,000 people when you've already got to 580,000. We're not saying or suggesting that backpackers shouldn't enjoy Zanzibar too. And of course they will do because it's a, it's, it's a very evocative destination. Um, it is still unspoiled. The people are very warm, friendly, welcoming and peaceful. And part of our role with government is to make sure that that continues and that they all benefit in that growth moving forward. Um, so now we're moving, so the next 10 years we see, uh, we would say we're moving in the next five to tourism 2.0. 2.0 is really where you have a much uh, improved planned process, um, yeah. much greater zoning, um, uh, greater understanding, not just on frontline developments, which we've discussed before, Sebastian, but also yeah. um, third line and behind villages. Uh, the community villages need to be integrated much more um, so that there's a greater respect within that, uh, within, within those locations so that it becomes a, a more harmonious and, uh, and improve picture both from waste management and indeed fresh water and, uh, and the like, uh, including education. So we see these as what we call cluster hubs, economic yeah. hubs. So there'll be probably six major um, cluster hubs around the island. Um, and uh, yeah, eventually, and so government gets more involved in 2.0, because it's about legislation and governance. And then 3.0 will be the last uh, between 2026 uh, and, and the end of the decade, which is where it then goes back more to private sector stimulus um, around a planned pro program. So um, I would like to say these are easy steps. Um, it, of course, they're not. And it means that it needs to have a clear collaborative partnership between public, private and community stakeholders. Um, but we believe that this can happen in Zanzibar, probably better than many other locations in the world, frankly. Thank you, Graham. This is a fantastic, uh, that's a fantastic outlook. I mean, you know, seeing how this can evolve and, and that there's a structured plan about developing this tourism industry. And uh, we're we are excited to be part of that and to be here. Um, Fatma, 
looking at the model of higher yields and low impact described by Graham just now, what do you believe needs to change in the hospitality sector to accommodate this model? Will smaller and traditional hotels still have a place in this market? Thank you, Sebastian. Um, actually, I just noticed that uh, Graham had covered uh, pretty much uh, most of the answers to those questions. But um, however, I'd just like to emphasize on a couple of things. Uh, when we talk about yield in tourism, there are different concepts of yield. And so um, the first important thing would be for all the stakeholders to be uh, in line and to also clearly define the different concepts of yield and how this is translated across um, the tourism value chain. And these linkages, as he said, you know, tourism has a spillover effect and many other sectors also take advantage. I mean, um, they, they do gain um, benefits from, from the tourism sector. And so uh, the concept of it, as I said, they are broad, but in specific to this particular topic, I think the most important uh, one we need to look at is yield as tourism expenditure. We need to identify the different types of um, consumers based on their spending powers and their average expenditure. So this, I think, as um, Graham has explained, there's a lot of um, initiatives that have been taken place. And I think Honorable Mahmoud Kombo has mentioned uh, yes, um, in a, a couple of days ago when we had the Tourism Stakeholders Forum that um, they are, have already been conducting surveys to really understand the different type of consumers. And then in regards to um, yield as contribution to gross value addition at the industry level, as uh, Green mm -hmm. mentioned, um, the public sector and the private sector, they need to work together so that they can join efforts mm -hmm. in upgrading of course, our existing uh, heritage sites, the tours and so on and so forth. And we also need to be very innovative in developing uh, niche-based activities to cater to special niche-based markets. So as an example, this could be uh, how we would need to develop perhaps a plan on how to attract, how to enhance uh, sports tourism uh, in Zanzibar. And then as the third concept, I think we need to take a look at yield in terms of its contribution to industry employment mm -hmm. and employment in general. And so um, because of the spillover effect it has on other sector, tourism is also labor intensive. So this means that we really need to look at developing the skills of Zanzibaris to ensure that they, they get to capture the, job, uh, the jobs that are available and take advantage of it. I think that's also great, has already covered that. And now when we talk about um, the lower impact uh, aspect, I think we need to adopt uh, greener practices so that we can conserve the environment and obviously to minimize um, the impact. Graham has already explained that all these initiatives uh, in partnership with the government and the private sector have been taking place. And uh, at the forum, we also had um, a presentation from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Forestries on how we can also all work together and, and conserve the environment. So I think um, an inclusive approach should also include women, uh, youth, as well as um, people of special needs and see how we can all benefit from uh, this model. Thank you. Yes, and I think, uh, Pamela, thank you very much. And I think you said something very important um, to develop these niche markets, like you said, uh, sports tourism or maybe even medical tourism or other things that can increase uh, the, 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 the employment or absorb the, the, the amount of people that can be absorbed in the tourism sector from pure services or into these niche markets. And I think that's, that's a very important factor to see that developing. Yeah. Lucas, in today in the Czech Republic, but I know you just left Zanzibar last week or this week, I think. Um, great to have you here. What measures do you put in place as a hotel manager in Zanzibar to start attracting guests again? What is your outlook as the manager of Tulia Hotels for this and next year, Lucas? Yeah, so for us, it was quite simple because uh, we just need to share the message, the positive message with the people that there is nothing wrong with Zanzibar. Zanzibar is one of the most beautiful destinations which is open now at the moment. So we just put the all stress on marketing because we are ready. And it's not only us as, as our hotel, but it's all the hotels. I seen that they are ready. Everybody's doing the maximum effort to welcome the clients, to ensure their safety, uh, provide them the best experience ever. So now it's only really about sharing the positive message that come 
come to Zanzibar because we are ready. And there was not a better time in my five year history than now. Yeah. Empty beaches, nobody yeah. there. So you are really having a private island. So this opportunity will never be there anymore. So I encourage yeah. everyone, come and enjoy. That, that's, that's how it should be now. Thank you. I mean, we are being very selfish right now. And you know, many experts from Tanzania, also people living in Tanzania, are very selfish. We're enjoying the, the beauty of emptiness a little bit. Or, you know, very few people around it in Stone Town or on the beaches, um, which is great. But of course, you know, we need numbers of tourists to come back. Um, so it's great to hear that you're very optimistic about this and the hotels. I know more and more hotels are opening again and, and operating now. And, and, and this is a great sign. And as we heard, from uh, Mr. Combo, it is said that yesterday alone more than 200 tourists arrived in Zanzibar and these numbers are, are slowly increasing. So this is a great, great uh, message. Exactly. And uh, Mr. I would, Mr. Yes, you want to add? If I could just add to that, because we were, one, we were wondering, shall we open or shall we remain closed? Yes. But what we did, we said like, okay, let's be bold. Let's go right and give an example and open. And once we opened Fantastic. the resort, even though we had low bookings, what we see yes. was incredible awareness of the people and we yes. quite started rolling the ball. And the more we were sharing the message, the being positive, being open, the more people we encourage to come. So I see yes. that our role as the, as the investors on the island is also to promote yes. the island. And I believe True. being open is one of the best ways forward. Absolutely, I fully agree. If you're closed, we can't invite anyone. If you're open, you're opening. That this is also today. We, that's why we invited you, and we're so happy that so many of you people out there in the world have joined us today to spread the message that Zanzibar is ready. Tourism in Zanzibar, tourism market in Zanzibar is ready. The hotels are ready and open. Welcome. And as the sooner you come, the more you will enjoy this beauty of not as full beaches. I mean, they're never as full as they are in many other places in the world, but. It's a beauty to experience right now. We want to encourage people to come as soon as possible. It is safe. It is beautiful. The weather is fantastic. I mean, it is just amazing. Minister Combo, thank you, Lucas. Minister Combo, what do you believe will need to be improved, if at all anything, to make Zanzibar attractive and ready for the future of tourism after this global pandemic we've seen? I mean, we've heard many things from Graham already and from Fatma what the government together with consultants and, and is, is doing to make Zanzibar ready for tourism 2.0, tourism 3.0. What are you currently doing to ensure you said already there's tests here and Zanzibar is safe to make Zanzibar attractive for this future of tourism we want to experience here? You need to shortly unmute Mr. Minister. Please unmute. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah currently, currently, we are preparing a special package uh, for Zanzibar that is uh, public in public-private partnership that uh, why should you work from home, work from Zanzibar? Why do you work from home, work on, from Zanzibar Beach? Uh, stay with your laptop, etc. because I'm sure uh, Zanzibar beach, Zanzibar condition, Zanzibar health condition, what we have here is one of the most healthy. I was reading this uh, very interesting book yesterday. It says here 104 plants uh, for spices. Uh, they, are, they are traditional medicinal value in Zanzibar. And I've been, I've been using a lot of these uh, traditional uh, spices and I think this this is my, my personal opinion, not my government, but my personal opinion. The spices played a key role during the whole pandemic process. And that's why we have until now statistically only six deaths for the 1.5 million population, which is, I think, uh, is a record breaker. Uh, so this is a package that we are preparing together with the government. It will include a visa for three months. We are working around with uh, 10 hotels all together, which each one of them has approximately on, it, on the average about 100 rooms. So it will be a package of 500 people who can uh, register themselves to spend their good three months. It will be all inclusive. And uh, Graham, it will, not be, it will not be very low, as you can see. It is going to be a middle level. And uh, instead of working from home, work from Zanzibar. But secondly, after discussion, after discussion with the 
Italian ambassador, I met also some EU representatives. And uh, it was seen that it was quite difficult to break through the EU regulations currently because they have quite strict regulation. And I'm sure they also need to protect their economy as well, for sure. So Europe uh, coming back in full scale will take time, maybe one year, maybe two years. I saw from your questionnaire, you put all the way up to 2022. So Europe will take time. Uh, uh, America will take time, but there are other markets which are ready. For example, again, I'm repeating, many people are surprised why I'm mentioning Russia, because I've seen it working, and I've seen the economy of Russia, the way it's increasing. Among only the three countries which are accessible to Russia without quarantine at the moment, at the moment, Tanzania is one of them. I don't know if you know, you, you knew. Only three countries are allowed to go to Russia without any quarantine from the airport. You go straight uh, to do your business as usual. And we also reciprocated the same for Russians. They can come here without any, any conditions, etc. So I think we need to explore other markets. I have to admit, I have to admit 100%, and it's not a blame, nobody can blame anyone. When I joined the ministry, South Africa traffic was very low. Kenya yeah. traffic was very low, but after yeah. having direct connectivity with Mango, today South Africa was not in top 10. Today South Africa is number seven. South Africa is number seven. Russia jumped from number 15 to number nine because of the direct connectivity. So the yeah. second reason is direct flight connectivity with this country. Unfortunately, we couldn't explore enough for the African market because we are not connected in Africa. Our easiest way and our, and our best way and the fastest gateway is Dubai because all flight head towards Dubai, fly Dubai, Emirates, even if you take Addis Ababa, for example, you need to provide also package with Ethiopian Airlines. So what we are doing at the moment, we are, besides the conditions, Europe, Europe has put, I must admit, Europe has put very, very, very tough conditions for our countries. We need to work together to explore other markets. Middle East guys is waiting for us. They need information from us, Middle East. Africa is waiting for us, needs information from us. The Far East, the Far East also is waiting for, for us. I just received last week a letter from Brazil. We're just waiting the corona situation to settle down a little bit in Brazil, but they want to start a direct charter flight from Rio de Janeiro, direct to Kisauni, Zanzibar which is just across the corner through CPS. So Brazil to CPS will be in hours, in hours, you see? So, so this is, is happening, and I think we need to work together between the government and you, the private sector, to explore newer emerging markets, especially now, post-corona period for Zanzibar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I can add to that. I want to add two points at this at this at this, uh, this great stage of this discussion. One of all, I, I'm supporting that Africa is really safe. I've been. I mean, I'm working here. I'm working with the I mean, in the villages, in the communities. I have meetings with hundreds of people every day, and I've been tested every time again. I travel to Germany to test the negative. So uh, I have to say, it's really. We also have seen an hour. People working with us, we have more than 400 people working on our teams. We had, didn't have any restrictions in terms of people getting sick with Corona. Um, so this is supporting. And then I completely support the idea um, to, to look at niche markets and at packages like we work here yeah, and a beautiful beach with a fantastic surrounding, fresh food, fantastic spices. And, uh, and, and, and you go up here, you can see we have fantastic internet as well. You can work yeah. all over the place. Absolutely. And, and I, 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 today I'm here at CPS here in Fumba and I'm enjoying the facilities of working here and the internet connection is good. Sebastian, what do we need to do now? For example, even Fumba, CPS can provide this package as well for the people who are on timeshare or they are, they are, on, they are other, in other places but they can lease their space here. I'm sure this can be started even here. Once you have good internet uh, connectivity, you have good working facility. And in the evening, you go to enjoy either Forozani, Batata Zorojo, or you go to any other, and other, uh, other tour, excursion, etc. For three months, by the time you finish here, everything is wonderful. And you have, you have multitude of your profit. You have multiplied your profits as well. 
So let's, let's start it. And I'm going to approach among these 10 companies also, we are going to include you as CPS to work for this special package for Zanzibar. Thank you. And you're doing this today. You're working still now. And after that, we now, I'm going to say later, we have Kildim Vinayat, the big speech club from Dar es Salaam is doing a session today, attracting a lot of people from Dar es Salaam today to come to Zanzibar and experience the beauty of Zanzibar. But I have one more news. I don't know if you've heard about it. I'm not sure if I can say that loudly, but I, I heard from the manager of Swiss Airline, which belongs to the Lufthansa Group, that Lufthansa are thinking about a direct flight of one of their daughters coming to Zanzibar very soon. So also Fantastic. they're looking for niche market. And then for Lufthansa, surely Zanzibar is a niche market, but they're looking to establish a direct connection from Germany, I think Berlin, to Zanzibar. It will add to what you said. And I'm sure, being a German, Mr. Combo, that your Europeans will come back very soon. The say. main problem now, the main problem with Europe, which you people also need to help us, is after your people visit Zanzibar, when they go back, is that quarantine period of 14 days. Yeah. That, is really, that is really creating, uh, creating the whole problem uh, for, for travelers. And that's why I said, uh, because we couldn't break that barrier, our ambassador, our European Union ambassador, who's based in Brussels, Belgium, he went to the European uh, Union meeting last two weeks, which was held, with all the EU countries and presented our agenda. And they still said that, no, we have to apply barriers for most of the African countries. I think it's very, very few African countries that uh, when, when, you are, when you are citizens in Europe return, they don't need to stay, stay in quarantine. The rest of Africa, we have 52 countries in Africa. The rest of Africa, I think it's more than 40 countries. You, you, you have to stay in quarantine. And I think that is the barrier. And that, is, that barrier is forcing us to think and, and look for newer, newer emerging uh, markets for us. You're right. And, and, and believe me, I know the tourism, the tourism industry, the European tourism industry here in, in Tanzania is fighting the European governments uh, on this issue. Uh, um, and, and so are we. Um, until a few weeks ago, I could travel to Germany without going to Zanzibar and Barcelona. Now I think they have again five days. So we are working on this and we're going to promote this and we're doing that today. Thank you. Graham, I have another question for you. You know, today we're also going to be talking about residential resort developments like the Seoul, the project Tobias is going to introduce to us later. How do you think these projects, the residential developments in Zanzibar, will support the tourism industry and attract additional investments into Zanzibar? What role do you think the real estate sector can and should have for the tourism industry in Zanzibar? You're still on mute, Graham? I am, no longer. Oh, yes. I, I, I just have uh, a comment, first of all, to Honorable Minister Combo, uh, who demonstrated his clear passion and innovation in those last words, which is, uh, which is partly why Zanzibar will nonetheless go from strength to strength, Honorable Minister. The new line should be successful business should be fun, not work. Come to absolutely, Zanzibar. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Um, Sebastian, on, on, the, on the question, uh, any successful destination from a development perspective uh, is clearly based on clarity of integration and development. And the long-term success in a sustainable way is based largely around that, which is why I believe um, it is so critical today to have that strategy in place. Um, I have been party over many years in creating destinations for tourism and other developments uh, where we've made mistakes, frankly, and we've built the wrong things and captured the wrong markets. And that uh, in many of those destinations, uh, we are trying to now, 20 or 30 years later, undo, actually, you know, remove the developments and start in another way, uh, which obviously has a much more costly effect down the line. So to answer your question, uh, real estate is critical. I think it's fundamental uh, in the long-term aspects of the destination security. It has an important impact across many areas, which Fatma also touched on before with regards to education, uh, improvements of service standards, uh, improvements of um, a well-being approach so that at the end of the day, real estate in Zanzibar should be around well-being, 
including local communities and you know the tourism experiences etc which are all the assets that um, are fundamental within the DNA of Zanzibar today and should be protected for its future so I think that investment um, planning is critical I think it's organically evolved with expertise such as you guys are bringing to the table and that Tulia have also done which are really showing uh, what can be done, even organically, and with respect, yeah. not with large corporation background, but with somewhat um, localized innovations, even though we're now including the Czech Republic as a local innovation, because um, we, see, we see you as sine qua non with, uh, with Zanzibar now. Um, yeah. Lucas, you're not, you're not leaving just because you have your elves behind you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it is critical, and... Um, yeah, uh, it should be integrated, as I said, in, in, the, in the right way and uh, planned properly. Um, I think that Zanzibar, like every nation of the world, is going to be fighting for investment, is going to be mm -hmm. fighting for visitors. I think that's going to be a good thing, not a bad thing. It, that, you know, healthy competition is, is good. It means that uh, experiences and quality delivery uh, become fundamental in that approach. And... Uh, people start to accept that within communities and standards improve across board and that's good for security peace and well-being so uh, right. again i'm sorry for my longer words you always say you always say with me please add short words i think that's because you probably know i don't have any um, <laughs> i think you both have the same problem but you know uh, we have a lot to discuss today but thank you thank you so much for your your, your opinion on this uh, Fatima, i would also like to ask you you are, are consulting real estate projects like Pumba Town when it comes to implementing hospitality concepts and developing hotels. So how do you see the developments of the condominium market and the rise of major real estate developments like Pumba Town or Blue Amber in Zanzibar influencing the tourism sector in Zanzibar? Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, just before I answer your question, I'd like to commend Lucas for uh, taking the bold decision and all the other hotels that have taken the bold decisions to open. Uh, yes. I have spoken to many, many other hotels who are who are very cautious about opening because they feel that, you know, the bottom line would not, you know, it would just not add up because there'll be uh, losses and all that because obviously the business is not as usual. However, I think it's very important to open up and be bold because business is risky in its sense. And uh, opening, opening up early means you're out there, people get to know that you're really you know, taking the necessary measures to, to adjust to the status quo and so on and so forth. So by the time it opens up, you'll be, you know, very well built to uh, take on the market. Um, to get back to your question, Sebastian, um, well, condominiums and the whole um, uh, condominium and real estate industry, it's, the concept is pretty much similar to hotels. Uh, hotels offer mm -hmm. safe accommodation, uh, secure, you have hygiene, and then you have um, the whole services, related services in terms of boutiques and so on and so forth. Now, uh, what the condominium market offers and the real estate one offers that hotels uh, may lack is the sense of community. Uh, for the condominiums and the real estate, you have communities like Fumba Town Development, where you have, you have the cafe, you look into all the different aspects of trying to make the residents and the non-residents experience of Fumba Town to be available and not having to go so far for the necessary requirements. And I commend you for having a, a clinic that is up to date in terms of uh, providing the medical services. So yes, I, I really do think that um, um, the condominium market is definitely essential and it is growing and it's definitely worth investing into. Uh, Zanzibar, as you have, uh, as many of us have already mentioned, is an international brand and uh, it's known for its sandy white beaches and its peaceful environment and we're very safe as well so um, i can definitely see that um, as an added plus to the growth of uh, um, of the sector um, and one thing that is going to really contribute to the tourism industry is uh, you know how during the peak season and the high season we're usually fully fully booked or over overbooked and we yeah. you know the need to expand our number of beds is, is there, it's, it's very uh, evident. So having condominiums where people can also uh, own and own houses, which they can also additionally put on Airbnb. So that means it increases the number of beds available to the tourism sector. So I can definitely see that increasing demand. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I know. I mean, the, the, the sector also, of course, will, will, will contribute to the capacity of the tourism market if exactly. it's done right, but it will also employ, create a lot of employment. And projects like exactly. Kumba Town have already created 450 permanent jobs. And, uh, and then more projects like this coming in, will, I think, play a great role in, in creating the job market for Zanzibar and permanent employment and for more people actually to participate in the success of the tourism development. Um, thanks. And, and Lucas, just one last question, because I've seen you already down one hour here, and, and it's so exciting to discuss with you all this. Uh, I could go on forever, but I think we have to restrict it a little bit. Lucas, how are your expansion plans? I'm not sure if I'm allowed to ask that question yet. You can also say, you know, it's still very, very secret, but are, are you progressing or are you on hold? And then what do you think? Is this a situation now to invest in Zanzibar or is this actually a situation where you would say, oh, we wait or is this, how do you feel about that? Yeah, exactly. So with Tulia, the current one, we want to expand and start a chain with two other Tulias to put them back on the market. And uh, we believe that this is the best time ever because now actually the investors are looking for the safe harbor to invest where they can put their money and they can see that the money will be, uh, will be developed or, or they will be have a high interest in the future. And when they see the Zanzibar as a brand, as the safe harbor, when they see Tulia as a brand of a safe harbor, and when you want yes. to introduce something new on the market, it's very attractive, very attractive. So today you might have a lot of uh, properties on sales, but usually those are the distressed properties. So it means yes. they were not the ones who were able to succeed. But if you have the brands where you can invest and you see that they were successful even during this long time, it means that this is the see that actually now this difficult time is giving us yeah. a big advantage for the future. Fantastic. I mean, that is the bold opinion saying, okay, this is the time, the best time to invest in Zanzibar. We are supporting that. We are continuing also. And I mean, from, from our perspective as a CPS, there's a portfolio on your side, and uh, we're happy to have investors like you in, in, in Zanzibar and, and uh, <coughs> developing it together. CPS is also, we are growing, uh, our sector is also growing, our projects are moving on, and we're going to hear more about one current project in, in a second. Minister Combo, I mean, we, we, we want to build together the private sector, together with government, we want to build confidence for tourists to come back to Zanzibar in large numbers. Yes. Ending this panel, <clears throat> and I know we're going to have a Q&A after that, just very, very short. What measures have you put in place to ensure the safety of the sector, the tourism sector? I know you've done the testing, and I know this question will also come again in the QA. This is really what is people are asking. Um, I know we are safe in Zanzibar. Um, what have you, just on the, on the, on the what have you put in place as a government to ensure the safety and security of tourists and investors coming to Zanzibar? Well, Zanzibar has always been safe to all the tourists who have been coming for the last 20 years, for sure. Uh, what government has done recently is um, strengthen, strengthen the health and uh, medical facility also uh, for tourists coming to Zanzibar. What we've done is uh, the government has invested almost 350,000 US dollars into this new uh, testing kits and laboratory. It's a specialized laboratory for vi vi virus only. It's called a vir vir virology lab. It's a very complicated uh, laboratory. Mm -hmm. And it checks all the viruses, not only the corona, but all the corona family, nephews and uncles as well. And uh, that, that, that's where the, the investment has been put. I think this will make uh, uh, people more secure. Uh, the researchers on uh, spices are doing their, their traditional medicine research, very big research that are going with the Japanese government in, in Zanzibar. And very soon they are coming, I think uh, you are also drinking spices, if I'm not mistaken now. Sp it will be either spice tea or spice coffee from Zanzibar. And that's why you are safe because your immunity is strong. And once your immunity is strong, uh, no virus can hit you or attack you. So that is also on, ongoing at the moment. Uh, with five hotels, I'll not mention your, their names because they, they've not given me permission. Uh, they are doing a special package for this uh, health. It's called 
health tourism, health spa, rejuvenation center, etc. They are almost changing their conceptual model of just a customer staying, but they are creating also the spice tour, the spice tour within that hotel, and uh, and creating each spice with their medicinal value for those customers to learn. So that also will create another new attraction for tourists to come to Zanzibar, whereby they will see, uh, they will feel safe. But statistically, as you you saw, President Magufuli today in his speech mentioned clearly he was launching the campaign. We are going to election, and today in Dodoma. At around, uh, uh, at around 3 o'clock, he launched his campaign in Dodoma and he said clearly today in his speech that we are free from corona because the, the stadium was packed. And he said he was looking for one person. He was looking. He said in his own words, and I'm quoting him. I'm quoting my president of the United Republic of Tanzania. He said he's looking for one person wearing a mask. I'm carrying my mask here. I have my mask with me. I'm carrying it always, and uh, it is very handy to carry it because you never know where you are going to go. And it's, it's nice to carry it. It's part of the regulation. It's part of, of the SOP. But he said he was looking in the stadium for one person with mask today, and he didn't see. And he said he, he also watched the Simba match, which was uh, 10 days ago. 10 days or 14 days ago. Yeah, and uh, the stadium was also packed. And he said... The normal, the normal, normal death, eh? not corona death, the normal death in all the hospitals, statistically, it has also reduced. So he said, this is a blessing from God. That's what he said in his speech. <laughs> that, that's a good word to end this uh, panel. Thank you, everyone. Um, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, we have seen WHO uh, publishing numbers, and they are saying that Africa, strangely, that the, the virus doesn't spread as in many other areas. There's been a lot of research being done why Africa has been not hit so badly. I just read one in the science mag last week. Uh, I don't want to go into detail now, but everything the scientists around the world are discovering at the moment support what our minister just said. And I was just, oh, no, President Magufuli said uh, already when the pandemic started. Um, Tanzanians and Zimbabweans are strong, and, uh, and Africans are strong, and uh, I think that's why it makes us a little bit more resilient than others. So thank you everyone for sharing the knowledge and giving this positive outlook to continuous growth of Zanzibar. We've heard about Zanzibar 2.0, Zanzibar 3.0, the numbers already increasing now. Investors like Lucas and others still investing and thinking this is the best time to invest. We as CPS can support this opinion 100%. And uh, so thank you for joining us. Everyone out there, our panelists will still be here for the Q&A session just after a short presentation. And then we will also publish the results of our poll. But now I would like to hand over to... Before, before you go, Sebastian, Sebastian, before you go, yes. before, before you put that, somebody asked a very good question from the, from the audience that, uh, Sebastian, why don't you reserve a few apartments for us to come and work in Zanzibar? We'll hire these apartments. You see, there's a new opportunity for you. So reserve some apartments, which will be temporary for one month to three months, where people can come and work from Zanzibar. And we'll, my ministry will give you a lot of support through our government. Thank you. But, but that's it. We'll do that definitely, and we'll talk more about that in the Q&A session, but we'll definitely do that. Thank you very much. Let me now shortly hand to uh, Tobias, um, discussing another option opportunity, I mean, also the soul is being developed to be a place to work and live in Zanzibar and spend a lot of time. Um, and Tobias is going to take on now and tell us more about this fantastic project on the east of, of Zanzibar. Tobias, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Sebastian. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. It is, I'm just trying to share my screen and presentation here. Okay. But yes, thank you very much. It was an extremely interesting um, discussion right now. And uh, I think also a very uh, good introduction to our Mr. Com, what I'm going to be presenting right now, because this is exactly um, uh, the theme for working from Zanzibar and uh, owning or renting an apartment here to stay for a longer time and actually work here, but enjoy also the beauty of the island. Um, so I will be presenting uh, quickly to you one of our current developments called the Seoul on the east coast of Zanzibar. 
Hadja, and uh, I'm starting with a short clip to give you a, an overview of what the soul is all about. Yes, so I hope, I hope it, uh, you could see that rather smoothly. It's always a bit difficult with the internet connection, but um, I think it should be fine. Yes, so the Seoul is a residential uh, resort development, um, which we're developing as CPS in Paje. Paje is on the east coast of Zanzibar. We've seen earlier today Lydia live from the beach there. Um, Paje has developed to one of the tourism hotspots on the island. Um, this is obviously because of its uh, amazing sunny beaches and the crystal clear water, um, but it has also developed to one of the top 10 kite surfing destinations worldwide because of its um, perfect conditions for kite surfing, but also uh, many other water sports. So uh, it is really a stunning and beautiful place to be, um, to go on vacation, but also to stay for a longer time. Um, and uh, with the soul, we basically are off offering you now to own a part of Paja um, and to own one apartment there, which we are developing right now. The Seoul is a residential resort um, with apartment buildings, which are situated within a very lush tropical landscape uh, and surrounding a huge beach-like lagoon. The whole development is also like our other, all our other developments based on permaculture principles, uh, meaning very sustainable and, uh, and resilient, not only um, built with a very modern environmental friendly building technology, but also the, the whole infrastructure and the services of which you can enjoy there are fully sustainable and uh, to enjoy a self-sufficient and resilient lifestyle there. Um, beside the apartment itself, we have a lot of common uh, facilities like co-working spaces, gym, cinema, and so on, which you can enjoy beside um, also going to the beach and doing the water sports and everything what you can do in Paja. Um, we have actually started construction beginning of this year of, with the first phase, um, in total 11 apartment buildings and a commercial complex. And uh, I would like to switch again to Paja to our project manager who is on site and will give you a short overview of what is happening there right now. Uh, good afternoon all to you and uh, good morning to some of you from the other side. Um, my name is Milan Heilmann, I'm the project manager of the Seoul and uh, welcome to the construction site here in Paje um, at the Seoul um, at our beautiful east coast of Zanzibar. Um, as you can see we have uh, started construction a couple of months ago and by now have completed the first substructure where I'm standing on um, in N2 in phase 1A. Um, basically now we are starting with the three buildings in phase 1A which are roughly 65 apartments. Um, we will be handing over the first apartments by mid next year and also starting our second phase or rather say phase 1B by the end of the year. And um, yes, that's basically it from our construction side here in Paje. Uh, we are progressing well and uh, it's nice to have you on board. Uh, let me give the words back to you on the other side. Karibu sana. Yes, thank you very much Milan for the short introduction on the construction side in Paje. Um, as mentioned before, we are selling their apartments from one up to three bedrooms. 
um, beautifully designed and in high quality with uh, environmental friendly building technology and uh, for a starting price of amazing $47,900 um, you will be able to get in touch with our team to ask all about the details on floor plans, payment plans, and so on. Um, I will share with you shortly also how you can do that um, through our website, but also WhatsApp or email. Um, but quickly, I just wanted to mention another thing uh, which is very special about the Soul is that um, with the Soul, you don't have to actually manage or rent out your apartment when you're not there on yourself. You can give the apartment into a professionally managed rental pool where your apartment can be rented on on a hotel like um, or, or service apartment scheme um, meaning it is completely managed for you and uh, you can book whatever uh, times you want to use it yourself and the, the rest of the year it is it is rented out for you and you can with that achieve returns on your investment of uh, roughly 20% per year. So that is a, it is really a very attractive investment opportunity um, with a very low starting price um, to own something, to own a part of Zanzibar. So I'm going to keep it very short here. Um, please get in touch with our team. They can give you all the information about prices, about availability. We still have a very few units in the first phase available. Um, you can chat with our team live on our website, the soul.africa, or you just uh, drop an email to sales at the soul.africa, even phone call or WhatsApp um, to plus two five five seven seven eight triple five double five zero, and then our team will get back to you and answer all the questions you might have. Um, also. Um, um, Obviously, important to mention, it is very legal and possible as a foreigner to invest here because it's under the Condominium Act of Sons about this project. Um, so please get in touch with us uh, and uh, the team will get back to you with all your inquiries. Thank you very much. That's from my side. Sebastian, back to you. And we're, we're looking forward to an exciting Q&A session with the panelists. Thank you, Tobias, and thank you for showing us this project. Thank you, Milan, on site. I think he's going to join us in office very soon, and we'll also be available if you have questions directly to the project manager of the Soul in beautiful, stunning Padre. Um, thanks for everyone to still be with us here. This is a great discussion, and I'm very excited to still see so many people online uh, joining us this late afternoon. Here in Africa and Europe, I mean, it's morning in the US for our clients joining us over there. Um, before we continue with the Q&A session, let me shortly share the very exciting, encouraging results, I think. Um, here they I are coming. Me, 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 and Graham, can... me, and Graham, me and Graham should get one apartment because the return on investment is very good. And Graham, instead of locking yourself in Oman, you could have locked yourself in Zanzibar at Paje on the beach, okay? Yes, that's true. But let's shortly look at the, at the poll results. So we see the first question, when do you expect tourism globally to come back? And uh, so 19% said the end of 2020. So this is the majority thinks that globally tourism will come back in 2021. So we globally, I think that we need to still be a bit patient. When are you personally planning to come to Zanzibar? And I really like that. Already 47% of our registrants and, and, and participants today are planning still to come to Zanzibar this year. Um, Ms. Minister Gombo, this is a great result. And that adds to the trend you see already. And 40%, so nearly everybody is planning to come this or latest next year to Zanzibar. So already this is nearly yeah, 350 people joining today. So they are coming for sure. And we've seen that, and I really love the answer of the last question, the confidence we've seen here, and nearly everybody actually gave their vote. Um, do you feel is this the right time to invest in Zanzibar? 91% saying yes, and this supports exactly what Luca said, what Fatma said, but also Graham. So 90%, 91% of our participants today would invest I think this is the right time to invest in Zanzibar. I think this is extremely encouraging after these times. And thank you, everybody, for taking part in this short poll. 
So now coming back to our questions, and we have a lot of questions here, but um, since the time has gone already, uh, we've really passed already one and a half hours. I'm trying to keep it short, but I have a question. And I know I think uh, Mr. Gombe, you answered that already. Uh, uh, one of our participants is asking: the minister spoke only of European tourists. Does this mean Africans do not visit Zanzibar or are they not encouraged? Mr. Combo, I think you can answer this very quickly. Are Africans encouraged to visit Zanzibar? Yes, I said, I said, I said for two reasons. Number one, yes. it is easier today to catch a flight from Kisauni to go to Europe than to go to Nigeria or Senegal or Sierra Leone. Okay. If you want to go to Senegal, Sierra Leone, or Nigeria, you will spend around two days because you have to go around many countries before you get there. That is number one. So the main issue is connectivity. And number two, I said this clearly, before joining this ministry, our focus was only on Europe. Every year we were going to Berlin, the famous ITV show. The Ministry of Tourism has been going to Berlin for more than 20 years, since Madame Samia Sulu was the Tourism Minister of Zanzibar. Now she's the Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania. And uh, we, our main focus was Europe, Italy, Spain, you know, and European market, and a little bit in the USA. We, never, we have never done enough efforts uh, for Africa. And that's why we innovated our own tourism show. The main purpose of our tourism show was to attract more the African market, the African DMCs to come and see what is there. So uh, main issues is one is connectivity. We are only, the only flight which connect, can connect you to Africa now is Ethiopian Airlines only. No other flight from Tanzania can connect you to other African countries. So connectivity is very important. And number two, we need to attend these shows in Africa, the Indaba, the South African show, the Nigeria, the, there's a very big Nigeria tourism show, the North Africa, Tunisia and Egypt shows, we need to attend. And that's why the first visit, instead of going to Berlin, when you guys went to Berlin, I went to Egypt, Cairo, and we, we won an award as one of the best destinations in Cairo. And I came with that award in Zanzibar. So, Partly the fault is ours. We have not done enough because our main focus, we were really focused on Europe and America. But uh, Corona, let's to look at Corona as an opportunity, not a loss, as an opportunity. Corona we, has enabled us to now explore new market. Uh, Czech, for example, my friend Lucas Signol is in Czech now. Uh, Czech has become an emerging market now for, for, for Zanzibar. And we never explored in Czech. We never been to Czech. Uh, Czech has got there several shows uh, every every year. We never went there, but there are two operator. One of the biggest two operator came to Zanzibar, and we started direct flight Israel direct flight, etc. So connectivity is the main issue, and number two is for us to go to those uh, market to explore, and uh, that is my my mission. Next mission. So clearly, everybody is invited, especially Africans are also encouraged to come to Zanzibar. And the absolutely, uh, absolutely, and, and just. For just for information for the rest of the people, East African community, we have not done enough, and you don't need a visa. You don't need a visa. You don't pay for a visa. It's a free, free visa. Okay, these other guys from Europe, they pay $50, and you know it, Sebastian, of course, at the airport. Uh, Sadek countries, all the Sadek countries, which is 16 countries in Sadek region, they don't need a visa. Visa on arrival, and it's free of charge. Free of charge. So, this is a good opportunity. Clearly answered. Everybody, I'm just seeing here in the chat, you know, people are saying Nigerian weddings are a huge market. Surely, uh, uh, Rwanda Air connects many countries. They are going to Dar es Salaam already, I think. They, they might be soon coming to Zanzibar as well. That's a difficult question. I think nobody can answer today. When is Kenya coming to Alice flying back to Tanzania? Uh, at the moment, there is a stop there. I think there's something to be sorted out when it comes to quarantine. I think nobody can answer this question. No, that's why. I would like to send a question, a direct question to Fatma Shivos. Dear Fatma, not Fatma Mabruk, but Fatma Musa. Where are you? Are you still here? Oh, no, I see Kevin is here. Um, Kevin is the sales manager of CPS in, in, in Kenya. He's at the moment in, 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 Fatma, in Zanzibar, in, in Pumba town. Oh, Fatma, you're also there. One of you. People are asking. What about the immigration laws? If I invest in Zanzibar, if I buy a property, can I get a resident permit? Can I, am I allowed to stay there? One of you, who wants to answer the question? Well, uh, I can. 
Let, let Fatma ask the question, Mr. Okay, Mr. Babu. You can, can have a short break. Fatma. Yeah, yes. Uh, if you invest, there's an echo. Yes. You, you, can you, get, uh, you can get a resident permit if you invest. Sorry. No. Okay, hi, go ahead. Yeah, sorry for the echo, yeah? If you yes. invest for more than $300,000, the government will give you a resident permit. But at the same time, if you are, there's an age limit, if you are above or uh, between 55 and above and you are retired, you also get a permit with the government. And also we are still in discussion with the government to lower down the investment, um, the investment mark to be at least around someone who can invest from $150,000 to also get a resident perm uh, permit. So far, the government has uh, just uh, give us a mandate, has just opened up a mandate for those who can invest for more than 300, that at least now they can get a permit. So the discussion is good. The collaboration with government, it is very good. Now we are moving in a very good way with the government, especially when it comes to permits. So we believe in two years time, uh, all this all this is going to change and people who are also investing from 150 and above can also get a invest a, a, a permit resident permit thank you fatma thank you fatma um we are all working for that and i know the sense of our government is also working on on, on improving that situation um mr combo unfortunately i have another question here for you everybody wants to hear your answers um what airlines are currently flying into Zanzibar? Can you tell us what airlines? I think you must be knowing that best at the moment. Yes, uh, four airlines are flying into Zanzibar. Uh, fly uh, Dubai, uh, Oman Air, Ethiopian Airlines, and Qatar Airways. I repeat, fly Dubai, Oman Air, uh, Ethiopian Airlines, and Qatar Airways. Emirates has, start, has started through Dar es Salaam. So you come off uh, through Dar es Salaam and take a smaller aircraft or a boat to Zanzibar. So these are the airlines who was officially scheduled flights have started in Zanzibar. Yes. And allow me to add to that, to Dar es Salaam, in Dar es Salaam, you can come now with Turkish Airlines. This airline is flying again, KLM. So you can use all those airlines and then it's just a 10 minute flight from Dar es Salaam and you are beautiful Zanzibar. I mean, I have another interesting question for you. Um, how comes you haven't explored the Far East market? I live in Singapore, and I believe it's a good market for your destination, for your apartments, or for tourism. Uh, we, we, well, we, 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 we attended the big show in Indonesia, and we attended the big show in uh, uh, Malaysia, and another one was OECD in Moscow, Russia. I was there myself to do the presentation. And uh, we, we, we spoke with several tour operators from Singapore who were there. And uh, we, it was not very attractive uh, for them. They had their own other markets which they were interested in. But if somebody is interested, they are welcome to contact me. You have my contacts. I'll put my contacts on the, on the chat board now. And uh, you, you, uh, I'm very happy uh, for you to contact me directly. And our ministry will help you if you want to, do, to deal directly with the Zanzibar or bring your own charter flight, arrange anything. And we are going to give you a lot of incentives if also uh, we can work together with the government because we, we are exploring newer markets and Zanzibar is putting up a special package for newer markets. So anybody from Singapore who wants to contact me directly and if you think you have a market or you have a charter flight that you can want to bring from Singapore directly to Zanzibar, which, is, uh, which you, can, you can have enough uh, volume, we are ready to assist you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, somebody just asked, is this flying again? Yeah, they have a flight in September, uh, December, silver. Lower, yes, this airline is flying twice a week to Dar es Salaam, and from there you can come over to Zanzibar. Graham, I have a question for you, which I think is an interesting question. Um, uh, as, the, as the hospitality profession, why are not more hotels in Zanzibar offering all inclusive packages. Somebody wants to know why are there so few hotels in Zanzibar offering all inclusive packages? Graham, can you answer that? Uh, well, there's quite a few hotels offering all inclusive packages. Um, most of them have um, 
price and rating structures that are at least uh, half board and you can have add-ons for full board. Um, so uh, I would say probably over 60% now are doing inclusive packages. I just think you have to do searches online. Yes. Uh, and, and primarily those are through tour operation brochures and, uh, and wholesalers. But um, okay. they're there. So we have, yes? Yeah. Thank you. Um, then uh, uh, there's another question. Kevin, uh, my, uh, sales manager in Kenya, maybe you can help me answer that question. Um, Somebody is asking, by investing in an apartment in Fumba Town, are you also offering management service, such as finding tenants, maintain, maintaining the property, managing utilities, etc.? Kevin, can you shortly answer that for us? Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. Um, I think that's one of the things that's really uh, booming heavily um, in Fumba Town. I personally have experienced a very heavy uh, week with uh, the rental demand that has been growing within the development. Um, we do offer, um, um, through our town management department, um, an opportunity to be able to manage your, pers your property personally for those who would want to rent out their unit and also for those who just want to maintain their units while they are away, perhaps, um, and always to ensure that the unit is in um, top um, uh, notch. Um, and, um, yeah, so it always depends on how the client would want us. We, we try to at least um specialize and um based on what the client would be more looking into but we do manage the properties for the for the clients yes thank you kevin thank you um emmanuel is asking and i don't think that would be a great question for project manager i don't know is is, is milan already back in the office i can see him here milan are you there hello yes i'm i'm here i'm not in the office but i um I keep my video off, so I hope you can all hear me. Yes. Um, Mila, thanks. Emmanuel is asking, what is the timeline for developing the soul once I paid for a slot, once I paid for an apartment? Yes, uh, very good question. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier on site, um, the first phase, phase 1A, um, is having roughly 60, 65 apartments. We are anticipating and targeting to hand over the first units by mid next year and to have the first phase handed over by end next year, early 2022. That is covering above 65 apartments. And then each phase is planned to be handed over in like a, a yearly sections. So the full project with all the 11 apartment complexes and the commercial center, which is part of the whole project, is anticipated to be completed by 2024. So that's roughly, what, three, four years from now. Okay, thank you, Milan. Um, we have many, many questions. I'm trying to answer as many as possible today, but we we'll give it another five minutes, and then I think we have to stop this, uh, end this panel. And but for everyone, I'm telling you, everyone who has not heard or received an answer, we will, our team will be working also after this session on answering all your questions, and and, and then we we'll also forward some to our panelists if you need expertise. Sebastian, excuse me, Sebastian. I would like to answer one, which is a bit sensitive. Yes. Somebody asked, uh, uh, how are we protecting local Zanzibaris? and all the investors who are here from tourists that can come uh, with corona in the country or from corona uh, infected countries. And uh, I said this in the beginning, I think you missed the answer, they missed the answer. I said we have put a very good standard operating protocols for corona. We start from the time the door of the flight is open, we, we, we measure the temperature, we measure everything there and there are standard protocols until you reach uh, immigration. After that, we, in each hotels that are operating now, we have put standard protocols. If there is any sign or indication, etc., immediately a quarantine is put around for two days in the, in the team of our surveillance officers. We have 28 surveillance officers in the Ministry of Health who have been trained to deal with uh, corona-infected uh, patients. After that, if it continues within three days, the patient is transferred to Kidimni Center, which is the main corona center where we had... Uh, 
those foreigners, you remember, uh, I think two of them were from Germany, uh, who are there uh, in isolation until uh, they are tested negative. And then, so these are the measures which the government of Zanzibar has put through the standard operating protocols to protect its citizens, its people, and uh, the, the investors who are living or residents of Zanzibar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very quickly, I want to answer myself the question of Yahya I have seen coming in. When will the Fumba Horizon Villas in Zanzibar and Fumba Town be finished, uh, delivered? Um, we are actually starting construction in beginning of October. We are clear, currently clearing and, and preparing the plots. Um, so end of next year, the units will be ready and uh, will be delivered. And now Andrea Tupper, the editor of the Fumba Times, is commenting. And I want to just read this to all of you. Um, media is very important, she says, and media needs news. Africa's low rate of corona is exactly this very good news. Africa has 5% of the cases, but 16, out of the, but 16 and of the world population. Sansevar's low corona rate could also be news if it only be, could be verified. Can the tourism, oh, where's it gone? Can the tourism, uh, where's the news gone? Oh, it's gone. Oh. Um, can the tourism, one second, please. Yeah, have I put it. Basically, what she's saying is yes, here it is again. Can the tourism sector, the minister, please convince health and authorities to test it again and release the test figures? As anywhere in the world, then all the sexy new schemes make sense where your home office would get great echo out here in Europe. So what they're saying is if we know, if we measure and say we publish the numbers, then everybody would run back to but, Zanzibar. But, but, uh, Sebastian, also let me give you the other side of the theory. All the countries yeah. we've measured are in biggest trouble at the moment, and we are not in trouble. We are free to go anywhere. All the countries we have measured are in very, very big trouble. Even the death toll, death toll is the highest in those countries who have done mass, mass testing. I'm talking about mass testing, eh? even at a home level. So, so yeah. each country has got its own stand, and this is our own. This is our Tanzanian stand, and that is what our our president and the government has agreed to take that stand. Yes. We'll only measure those who are traveling outside and those who are required, who are coming in with indications of corona. We'll measure those. That is our those point. Those symptoms, yes, exactly. No, this is understood and I agree with that. Um, let me finish this, this, this wonderful uh, panel with one question here. Uh, when will you be home, be on sale? Uh, let me, how long... And this is a question I'm, I'm, I'm giving to Fatma again. Fatma, um, Mr. Kompo, please put your microphone and your speaker off so Fatma can answer. How long does it take? Uh, oh, it's so many questions coming. How long does it take for one to receive a copy of the agreement by a SIPA and the provisional title after having paid the first installment in Fumba? Sorry, Sebastian, we cannot hear you. Um, can you hear me now, Fatma? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Okay, Sebastian. Fatma, you can't hear me. Can you hear me, yeah. Fatma? Yes, I can hear no. you now. Okay, Fatma. Uh, James is asking, how long does it take for one to receive a copy of the agreement signed by SIPA and the provisional title after having paid the first installment in Fumba Town, buying an apartment? Uh, for, for, for the agreement, uh, one week, it has to be signed by SIPA. And for the provisional title deed, not more than one month. Thank you. Thank you. And let me now thank you all. And I want to actually, I want to finish with a chat comment of uh, Yusuf here. Yusuf is saying, I want to congratulate the Tanzanian government for doing an amazing job. And, and we want to join that and, and saying that as well. Thank you for not locking us down. Thank you for helping us promote this country. Thank you for having us to promote this industry. I want to thank the Honorable Minister to join us this evening. And uh, thank you for all the support. I want to thank Graham for taking your time to join us tonight, promoting and giving confidence back to Zanzibar. I want to thank you, Fatma, for joining us in Kumba Town with all the expertise you can give us. Of course, Lucas, thanks for having your hotel open and come back soon. We we'll need you here to develop this country. Thanks to the CPS team and uh, I'm sharing one more thing with you. Uh, it's coming here now. 
Uh, today we are doing exactly what our minister has said. Well, is it the right thing I'm doing here? One second, please. Yeah, with me. <laughs> uh, um, we're doing exactly what our you minister has said. The one with the, with, the, with the same sex partner, but anyway, we'll leave that for the next time. <laughs> I didn't want to answer that one. I can give you that as a last one. Let's do that the next time, Mr. 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 Combo. I will answer. Everybody will get an answer. And those we can't answer as the CPS, we we'll forward them to you and you're free to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> contacts. Yes. So everybody will receive the answer. But Excellent. before but ending now, you're already very late. Uh, mm. I want to show one more thing to you. So, um, Tonight, uh, Mumbai is doing what Minister said. They're not only working, but they're inviting everybody to come to the country, but to talk about the celebration of our first Olympic night in Mumbai. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us around the world. It was a great event. Thank you to my panelists again. Thank Thanks, you. Man. To the thank you. Today. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you for moder your moderation. You are excellent. Graham, nice to see you. Lucas, Signor, nice to see you. Okay. Fatima Mabrook, it's always a pleasure, although in our seminar you are very quiet in the other seminar. And uh, <laughs> Kevin, nice to meet you. Uh, Milan, all the best. Uh, you are on the street, so all the best. And Tobias, thank you for organizing everything. All the best. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Everyone. Thank you. See you guys at the party shortly. <laughs> yes. See you all. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Enjoy the party. Thank, Thank you. you. Lucas, enjoy Czech, Czech Republic. I will. <laughs> How you. is the weather there? Good? No, not as good as in Zanzibar. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Zanzibar is solid. And how is the corona situation there? Uh, so far, Czech is managing very well. Okay. Okay. Okay, take care. All the best. Bye. Joe. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.